All right, so the last and final step, we're finally gonna be able to see something on the screen. We're gonna create our React app. We're going to use Create React App, um, which comes with NPM when you install it. And what this is gonna do is it's going to make use of a script that Facebook created that is going to initialize our entire project directory so we don't have to do any of the configuration or fancy setup for our React app. It's gonna do all of it for us and auto-generate it. So let's cd to our project directory. All right here you can see all the files that we created previously and we're going to do the exact command right here that's listed on the screen at uh, Facebook's Create React App uh, website. So we're gonna do NPX, NPX Create React App and we're just gonna call it My App 2. The second argument that you write right here is just whatever you want the folder to be called. In our case, we're just going to do My App. So we're gonna wait for this to finish. And while that finishes, or let's just wait for it to finish actually. All right, perfect. So now that it's done, let's cd into that newly created directory. cd dash, or before we even do that, we need to open up uh, Visual, Studio Code, Visual Studio Code. So let's do code dot. And we can see that our newly created folder right here um, they created a nice little React folder that uh, already has NPM installed and a bunch of different directories. So, but before we do that, we actually made a mistake with our API. So you're gonna need to install cores, do NPM install cores from the command line within the root directory. I actually already have it installed, so we can just do this real quick together. NPM install cores. And this is just something that we need to do because by default the browser will block any type of um, request that you make to outside sources. And in our case, we're making a request to the API that we have set up on our computer. So we need to make sure that we unblock that and we can do that with a package called cores. So after you do npm install cores, you need to import the package right here. So do const cores equals require cores. And then right before you actually do your app, do app.use cores. And the last step is we actually had this um, initial, or we had this declared as a variable called SQL, but we're gonna declare it as query instead, because that's what we have right here for the argument that we pass into db.query. So after you do that, save this. We can just keep that as it is for now. And let's focus on this folder right here that we have called my app. Now this source directory has all of the different files that we need to actually render something to the screen. So let's go in right there and I can show you what it's gonna look like. So you can do npm start, that's a script that comes uh, you know, straight from the create react app command that we, that we ran from the command line. So if we do npm start, it's gonna start up our app and hey, look at that, we have something right here that was created for us um, and we can start editing this app.js file to actually make some changes, which is located right here. But we're gonna do this all from the beginning from scratch. So let's start with deleting the source folder. Yes, and we're gonna do all of this on our own. So let's create a new folder called source. And the first file we create is gonna be called index.js. So the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, create this index.js file and this is going to be the entry point of our app. Um, when you do npm start it's going to first look at this file called index.js and figure out hey what do you want me to run to create your app and initialize it and what components do you want me to render so that you can see something on the screen in your web browser. So first we're going to import react from react. Come on. We're going to import React DOM from React DOM. And then we're going to import an app we haven't, or a component that we haven't created yet, but we will pretty soon. And it's going to be located in dot slash components, which is a folder we have not created yet. And the file we're gonna be looking at is app.js. So in order to paint something to the screen, we're going to do React DOM dot render, and we're going to pass in that app component with the following syntax. And we're gonna use document.getElementById and we're gonna specify the root. Now, what this says is we're gonna use React DOM. So the entire 
HTML file that we have listed in public is the canvas. And as you can see right here, the ID is called a root. And what we're saying is, hey, we have a component that we have not defined yet, but it's going to be called app and it's going to be located in a folder called components and the file is going to be called app.js. And what we want React DOM to do is get the document that has, which is the HTML file right here. And we want it to find the element with the ID of root, which is right here. So this div is going to house all of the information, all of the uh, different pretty little HTML tags that we render to the screen right within this div container right here. And so that's going to be our canvas that we work with throughout the entire course. All right, so let's do our next step. Let's create a new folder called components. And let's create that app.js file that we just listed right there in index.js. So the app.js file is going to also make use of React because this is going to be a component-based class. And we're going to destructure out component from the React package. And just so you know, this was already all installed into our package.json. You can see it right here in the dependencies. So that's why you don't see me going to the terminal, typing npm install, anything like that. Then we're going to import another component that we have not created yet, but it's going to be called table.js. And now we're going to start writing some code. So we're code. So we're going to do export default class app extends component. And we're going to initialize the state right here. And we're going to do component did mount. And in here, this is where the beauty of our um, API is going to come into play right here. So we're going to use fetch which is a inbuilt JavaScript function that we can make use of. We don't have to do any type of installation right there with NPM. And we're going to pass it the API endpoint that it needs to look for to get some type of data out of it. So we're going to do localhost 4000. And it's going to be called get all anime. So this is the path, or this is the URL, excuse me, that the um, front-end application that we have, the React application, is going to request, and it's going to look at this URL, get all anime, which is what we defined in our API.js file. So it's listening on local host, and the API endpoint is get all anime, so we specified that right there. And when we request, when we send a request to that API, it's going to give us back all of this data, so all of the data from the anime table that we have set up on our database. So we're gonna write that fetch and we're gonna do dot then because after we run that request, it's gonna return something to us and it's gonna be a result and we're going to parse through that as JSON. And then we're gonna do dot then and take the JSON that we were given and set it to the state which is going to be a key called data, and we're gonna set that data key to the JSON. And you can specify that up here, right here, because that's gonna be the only variable, or the only key of state that we're gonna be working with right here. It's gonna be an empty array when this component is first loaded. And then when component did mount, does its little um, computation right here, it's gonna set data, this right here, to the JSON, to all the rows in that anime table that we just fetched. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do render. And we're going to print this out to the screen so you guys can see exactly what is going on. So we'll do console.log this.state. And then we're going to return the table component. And it's going to pass in the data. Perfect. And that's all we need to do. So the last thing that we have is we're going to create that table component. And this is actually going to require us to install. So open up a new window. We're going to install a new package. CD to your project directory. And make sure you go into that my app directory that houses all of the um, files for our React app. We don't want it to be at the root where we have this MySQL and API.js file. You need to um, change the directories to that React app folder. Okay, so perfect, we're right here, we're with public source, and we got some node modules and a readme. So let's do npm install react-table. And this is a library that we're gonna make use of because it has all of the 
fancy logic to create a nicely styled table so we don't have to make one from scratch. Okay, so now that we have the um, React table package, we're going to create a React app, or we're going to create a component. We're gonna import React. You always have to import React in order for um, JavaScript to recognize that this is a React component, a React file. So we're gonna import React table from React table. And then we're going to import that style sheet that comes natively with the React table package. And we can just do that with a simple import. Okay, so now we're going to define a functional based component because we want to you use functional components in order to improve performance a lot of the time. And since we don't need to have any state associated with this table, with this table um, component, we're gonna make it a functional based component. That's the only difference, or that's one of the only differences between functional and class-based components. Functional don't have state, so as a result, their life cycles are simplified and it improves the performance of your app. It makes it a little more faster. So we're going to first find the first row because the first row is actually going to have the headers or the columns of the table. And we're going to set this for the columns. So we're gonna create an array for the columns. And we're gonna say for all of the keys that are in that first row, so that's why we use let in that, um, or that's why we use in this in loop because it's gonna iterate through all of the keys of that object. We're gonna do columns.push header key accessor key. And this is just the syntax that the columns array needs to be in for when we um, go to pass it to that React table library. So now we're gonna do a return and we're going to do React table. We're gonna give it a class name of dash striped dash highlight. Oh, sorry, we need to write it equals there. And then we're gonna do data equals the data that was passed in as a prop right here. And we're going to do columns equals columns, which is this variable that we set right here. And then we're going to do the default page size. So how many rows of data it should show, because um, there's going to be pagination on this table by default, which is right there. And then we're going to export this. And we should be good to go now. So let's rerun this and open up another terminal. Um, a separate terminal because if you look right here we have no rows found there's nothing in here because it's not the API that we have is actually not running so navigate back to the root directory that react tutorial tutorial folder and we're going to do node api.js and this is going to have the app start or the API start up so that it can start listening for the requests so now that we have that let's do a refresh and wow, look at that, our, our table is populated with all of the information from our MySQL database for that anime table. So the first one you'll see when we did our um, console.log for this.save, the array is empty, there's no data there because when we first set it up, that's what we initialize it to. We initialize it to an empty array. And then after component did mount runs, so after the component is loaded for the first time, it's going to fetch everything from that API endpoint that we have right here. The API endpoint is going to select all the information from the anime table and then send it back to us from that request that we just made. And then once we get all of that data, we're gonna set it to the state, which is right here. And then the component is gonna re-render because the state has changed. And so it's gonna pass it into the table. And then this proper or this prop right here, the data is going to get updated and it's going to load the information all into the table. So we have 12,000 rows right here. So that is the first step to our app. This is basically how all of the logic is going to work together. We're going to create a API endpoint. We're going to create a table in the database. Then we're going to create an API endpoint to retrieve the data from that database. And then we're going to create a React component that requests the data from the API and then feeds it back into our application and renders something onto the screen.